Hey guys, yeah, with the Super Pacific season halfway through, I thought what better time than now to give you guys my prediction for the entire All Black squad to what I believe Scott Robinson will select going into that test series against the English. So again, it's going to be tricky because there's obviously a few players that I, I would like to think are guaranteed, but also because it's, a, it's, a, it's the start of a new cycle, you know, there's going to be a lot of bolters kind of uh, making a claim to enter into this All Black side. So yeah, I'm very excited to obviously uh, kind of select what I believe um robinson could select here but again before we get into this make sure to obviously like the video guys click the like button subscribe to our channel if you haven't already guys and yeah comment below let me let me know your kind of i guess prediction in terms of the entire squad for what you believe scott robinson will select going into that test series against the english in july but um yeah i mean again as you can see below me there is obviously the tier list um this is how we're gonna be kind of um selecting these players We'll be going over, of course, by, via the positions, going off, going from props, hookers, locks, loose forwards, scrum ass, fly halves, centers, and to finish it off, winger slash fullbacks. So again, we're gonna go over these uh, positions um, entirely, and yeah, we're just gonna select the squad. So let's just dive straight into this. So as you can see, you know, we're gonna start off with the props. We do have the likes of Ethan Negroot, we have Shevin Numia, we have George Bauer, Aiden Ross, Alfred Kamafasi, Tamati Williams. And Tyrell Lomax and Fletcher Newell. So it's a eight. There's a, it's a there's a selection there of eight uh, props, but I'm probably only going to select six in this case. And I think the three in terms of the loose heads I'm going to select with is definitely Ethan Groot. I think you know again he's obviously just come back from injury, but he's getting you know he's going to start to have a lot more minutes under his belt um, uh, by the time kind of that selection process happens. And again, I just think he's a guarantee. You know he was good throughout the Rep World Cup as well, so I think you're going to go with Ethan Groot. I've been very impressed by Chevy Numia. I think he's one of the bolters that I'm going to select um, early on. I'm um, obviously in this prediction that I believe can make it. So Chevy Numia, I think gets in. I think he's been very good for the Hurricanes so far this season. So I think he definitely deserves a selection there. Again, I'm looking at George Barr. I just don't think he's had enough minutes. So I'm not looking at him. Um, unfortunately, same with Eddie Ross. I think I just don't think he's had as good of a season as he had, as he's had in previous seasons. So that's kind of why I'm not looking at him as well. I probably will go with Alfred Tungafasi. I just think he's been really good for the Blues. Uh, you know, again, he's only played a, he's only played in the last, what, few rounds. But again, he's been straight off the back scoring a few tries uh, for the Blues. So I'm definitely going to go with him. Again, he can obviously, he's one of those players who can cover loose head as well as tie head. So it's kind of good to have um, kind of a versatile player in that position. Again, um, in a similar sense, I'm going with Tomate Williams as well. Can do the exact same thing off of can um, in terms of playing both positions. And in terms of all the props uh, from the Crusaders, um, he's probably he's, he's probably is the best one. So I've got to go with Tomate Williams there. Again, Tyrell Lomax, another Hurricanes player I'm going to go with. Uh, can fill in that tight end spot easily. Been doing really good, actually. A very solid player, I'd say, uh, so far throughout this uh, season for the Hurricanes. And yeah, just been very underrated in terms of how good he's played. So he definitely gets in in my in my case and yeah i think the final one i think i'm gonna probably go with fletcher newell i think that's just he's a very solid kind of player to have again you can play both positions if needed but again he's he's more seen as a uh, tight head so i think that's kind of the uh the six props there but um yeah in terms of the hookers there's only a selection of four here because there's not really a lot of hookers i can see the all black selecting in this case and again the 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 four is a sophomore some of sonny Tokalaho, ricky riccatelli and uh, Cody Taylor. So those are the four, but you have to also remember that Cody Taylor hasn't really played a minute so far throughout the season because, again, he was under sabbatical. So he only, I believe, will play later on um, towards the latter stages of this season. So hopefully we see a bit of him. But again, there is also rumors floating around that he actually may not be available for the All Blacks because he, he's kind of... Um, thinking about a move to japan but again it's obviously just rumors so i'm not going to kind of um kind of um count that uh, put that into my consideration but um uh, i think no matter what you got to go with Safa more he's definitely been the best hooker so far in super p without a doubt i think he him and um you can probably say matt fazer but obviously from a wally's perspective but a sophomore definitely is the best um kind of new zealand hooker so far in uh so far this season second to him i it's tough. I mean, it's Ricky Ritelli's had a good season. Same with some of Sonny Taklaho. If I had to flip between the two, I'd probably say Taklaho's had the better season. So he kind of be my backup choice, I'd say, going in, looking at those hookers. And then, yeah, following that, I probably would go with Ricky Ritelli. But again, this is obviously, like I said beforehand, Cody Taylor, we just haven't seen him play yet. But if he gets Sonny playing a bit more minutes and just 
um, as as I expect he will. So then that could obviously flip around when we do our updated prediction later on. Um, later on, but uh, yeah, for now I think that's the three hookers I'm going to go with. But uh, yeah, in terms of locks, this is a tough choice because there's, there's a lot of good locks uh, this year, guys. Um, again, you know it's a new cycle, so there's obviously going to be a lot of. Uh, good players up for grabs. I mean, no matter what, you're going to have Scott Barrett. I mean, he obviously came back from injury, um, and it's good to kind of see him kind of playing a few more minutes now. So he's definitely going to be in my selection, I'd say. I mean, again, he I'm not sure is he still an injury? I think he may be. Um, but again, no matter what, he's he, he's always been very solid for the All Blacks and was very, very good throughout the Rubber World Cup. So you got to go with him. Patrick, Patrick Tupeloto, another player who was obviously injured um, from the very start of the season, but has actually come into the Blues now um, actually earlier than expected. And it's been really good, I'd say, so far. Uh, again, I think he's only had one game where I'd say he, he was a bit off. But again, that's kind of just him getting back to, back to, this, back to the use of things. Um, so I'd say, yeah, Patrick Tupelotto definitely gets in this in this, in this this team. Um, yeah, I mean, he's been brilliant for the Blues. So definitely going to put him in. Um, again, I'll probably go with Tupa Valai as well. I think he's been another good player uh, for the Chiefs so far. Very consistent as normal. And yeah, just kind of demonstrating that he definitely hasn't um, you know, lost any kind of, um, I guess, like touch or any consistency from what we saw in previous seasons. So yeah, he definitely gets in for me. And then, yeah, I mean... I mean, there's other blocks here in terms of like um, Isaiah walker Lawyer. There's also Josh Lord, even Quinton Strange. But I'm actually going to look at Caleb Delaney here, and this is a this is another one of those bolters that I'm selecting here. I think he's had a really good season uh, for the Hurricanes. Again, he's been playing that, in that lock position. Again, he's similar to Tupo Valai. He can play six if needed, if needed. But he's he's no he's known as a, a lock. Um, so I think I think he's been brilliant for the uh, the Hurricanes, and I think he's one of those players where you can you can kind of develop early because I think he's what 24 years old. So you want to obviously caution on well, you want to make sure you have a bit of youth in terms of uh, in terms of every position, and having a youth kind of a uh, locking pairing of Valai and Delaney maybe off your bench or even one of them starting or both of them, I think it's really good to have. So I think that's the reason why going within there. Am I going with a fifth? Um, I'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll look back at that. But for now, in terms of the loose forwards, I'm probably going to go with the likes of. Oof, I mean, no matter what, you're going to go with Artisan Via. That's a that's the guaranteed one. Same with Sam Kane because you know he's obviously captain still. Again, you never know. Um, Scott Robinson may choose not to have him, and that's personally for me. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't go with him. But you have to understand. I'm thinking of the context of Scott Robinson in terms of what's the likely case in terms of who I think is stood out and also just who I think is guaranteed. And I think Sam Kane is still in that conversation of being a guaranteed player. So I would go with him still. Um, again, Papa Lee, you're going to go with, I think he hasn't had um, as good of a season as previous seasons, but I think he's, he's always been a solid player. And again, could play seven or six. So I just think he's, he's good to have someone like versatile in that way. <sighs> who else? I mean, Hoskins a 2-2 I probably put in there. Again, he's been really good for the Blues in terms of A position. Um, even Blackadder, you're probably going to go with because, again, he's only just come back from injury. But the Blues, oh, sorry, the Blues, the All Blacks are kind of, um, I guess, um, there's not there's not a lot of um, sixes out there that you can pick from because, you know, with the likes of Shana Vazell not available now, you, you, need come, you need someone to kind of fill that gap. And even Blackadder could be that option. So... I definitely consider him. I mean, even uh, somebody playing the finale, actually, for the Chiefs, I'd probably put in the conversation as well. I think those two players will be kind of eyeing up that sixth position, I'd say, under Robertson. Uh, is there another player? Again, I think I'll only choose one more. Do I choose one more? Uh, you know what? Actually, I actually, I, I can't believe I, I, I didn't set this guy in the first place. Brandon Uwesi, I think he's been an excellent player so far, the Hurricanes. Another excellent player. And again, he can play six or eight. So there's actually a case where maybe you put him as the six, maybe. I, I don't know. There's a, he's a very good player, guys. I think every game he's played so far has been excellent. So, yeah, I think that's probably the uh, the seven I'd go with in terms of the um, the loose forwards. I mean, let, let, me, let me just kind of position that around just so you guys, just in terms of sixes. Because you probably go with Ethan Black. I know there's the six option. in semifinal. finale. Papalia put there just in sevens, eights. Yeah, you put Sevilla maybe more of the seven areas because those two can cover eights. Same as six for him. So, yeah, that's good. I like that overall. I think that's, what, 20 players so far I've selected there. Maybe I'm then towards the, um, the, the backs here. I'm going to go with the likes of... Oh, it's tough because in terms of scrum ass, you have the likes of Finley Christie, Cortez Latima, Falafa Kataba, and Tita Perinar, of course. Kyle Morgan, unfortunately, is out um, for a long time. I think he'll only come back until probably... Well, he'll probably only be available until the Autumn Internationals, maybe, I'd say. Uh, again, he could be available within some parts of the Rugby Championship. You never know. But I know he's definitely not going to be available for the English Series um, test. So, 
out of these three, I'm probably going to go with Cortis Latima. He's been great this season. I think he's, he's I think up there with the top try scores of seven. So you definitely have to go with him. I'd probably go with um, God. This is tough because. I love Flava Kataba. He's just an awesome scrum half. But do I think he'll make it? I just because uh, he he's awesome in the way like where he's he's more of a, a tr he looks for the try assist in a way rather than the tries for most of them. Finley Christie's a bit of both. Where he, he hasn't been as good this season, I'd say. Chief Bernard, he's you need experience. You know what? I'm gonna go with Flava Kataba. That that may be um, a bold choice there. Hopefully you guys agree with me that one. I think he's been awesome. For the Highlanders, I think you've got to have some representation there from them. And I think he's been good. And he's a very solid backup. He can make an impact off the bench if needed. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Fafa Kataba. And then, yeah, between TJ Perinar and Philly Christie, I think for right now, I'm actually... I, I know he hasn't had as many minutes compared to Christie, but I'm actually going to go with TJ Perinar. I just think they're going to... They're going to... I think that experience is going to help him kind of put him into that position. Maybe a, a third choice uh, scrum half. Uh, I could be wrong. Again, you know, obviously... Uh, Finley Christie, hope he does well for the Blues. But um, I think that's a that's a solid three in terms of that scrum halves. In terms of the fly halves, I think this is where it's pretty easy. You're going to go with McKenzie, definitely as the number one. Bowden Barrett, of course, will be available for selection, even though he's playing in Japan, because he's obviously going to be coming back to the Blues next season. And then this is where, do you go with someone? I mean, there's Brent Cameron. I think he's had a good season for the Hurricanes. Um, but then there's also Steven Perifetta, who I think has been excellent. But, of course, has been, has been playing more as a 15 rather than a 10. So... Maybe you choose him in terms of this fly half position, but then he can cover obviously that winger slash fullback area. I think you know what I, I, I'll say those two just as in terms of the fly halves, but then maybe I'll consider Perifeta maybe later on. But um, I guess in terms of the centers, I think this is where again it's very easy. You're gonna go with the likes of Jordy Barrett, uh, of course, recently uh, announced that he's signed an extension and will be playing for Leinster next year. But again, that won't have any bearing for what uh, will happen in, in terms of this selection. Again, Reiko definitely get in. Um, again, hasn't had a, the best of seasons, I'd say, for the Blues. Um, but again, he's still a solid player. And I think that combination that Ian Foster um, kind of created, um, and, you know, with um, Jordy Barrett and Reiko, I do think really kind of turned out uh, good. I mean, we saw that really throughout the Rugby World Cup as well. So I think that's a very dangerous combination to have. And something which I think Robinson may let the play around with, obviously, because he's, a, you know, he's a lot of time to, uh, you know, kind of uh, develop his side. You know, there's, it's a four year, it's, it's only the start of a four year cycle. So there's a long way to go. But I definitely go with those two. I'd probably go with Antonio Brown. I think he's been very solid so far for the Chiefs as well. So that's another player I'd select there, 100%. Um, and yeah, this is where it comes down to the final few players because there's a, there's a lot you can, I can go with here. I mean, there's the likes of Sam Gilbert, there's Dallas McLeod, there's uh, Che Fanaki who's had a good season for the Crusaders, there's Levi Moore who's been, I guess, a bit disappointing because you would expect more from him, but he just hasn't lived up to the potential to say for what we saw last season with Mono Pacifica. There's uh, Quintu Pai who's kind of come back from injury, uh, from a long injury, but he's now playing a few more minutes now for the Chiefs. And again, he's a previous All Black, so he's obviously been in consideration. And then, yeah, the final one, David Avili. So, Avili has always been a solid player. And I think Robinson really does like Avili. But he just hasn't he hasn't been good see, this so so far this season. I I honestly don't think Avili has been good. I mean, that's maybe a, a, bold, a bold claim as well. But I think, oh, gosh. Avili is just so, uh, it's, it's tough. Do I go with Avili? I, I, I'm actually not going to go with Avili. I... Oh, would Rob I think Robinson would go with him, but you know what? I'm actually gonna go with Das McLeod here. I think I think McLeod out of if I had to choose McLeod or Havili, I'd probably go with McLeod here. So yeah, Das McLeod, I'm gonna go with. I think that's I think that's solid to have at least Das McLeod because you can you can cover that 12 spot. Same way Antelope Brown to be fair, and you can cover 13 or even a winner if needed. So yeah, I like that. Uh, I'll look back at Havili. You, you never know. I'll, I'll see at the end here. But in terms of the wingers, 100 percent gonna go with Martelea. Moni Narwa, both of them have been excellent so far for both their both their respective clubs. Um, definitely going to go with the likes of um, Sean Stevenson. Now with Will Jordan out for for a long time, I mean a long time. Um, you definitely they definitely need a fifteen, and I think he has been the best fifteen for um, in terms of New Zealand um, out of all the New Zealand players. So you're going to you're going to go with Sean Stevenson. I think you're also going to go with um, Severis. I think he's been um, good to see, obviously, back in uh, back in the uh, Crusaders. Again, he was a, he had a big injury last year that that made him unavailable for the World Cup um, in terms of the selection. So it's just kind of good to see him back into back into form. And I think he actually um, equaled the record, actually, if I'm not mistaken, uh, recently uh, for top try score in Crusaders history. So that's pretty impressive as well. But um, yeah, he's definitely in the, in the 
in the uh, selection for me. I'd also actually go with Caleb Clark. I think he's been very underrated so far to what he's done so far, um, this season. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a Blues fan, by the way, guys. I just think, honestly, like I, I've been I've been a very harsh critic on Caleb Clark. But I think this time around, for what I've seen so far, he's, he's, he's produced well. So I will go with him. And then, yeah, I think... I mean, this is where you need a bit of cover because I only, I've only really selected one 15, really. I mean, again, you could have McKenzie and Bowden Barrett if you want to play as a 10-15 combination. I personally wouldn't want to see that because I, 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 I just, I, I wouldn't want to see that. Um, I want to see, I want to see something new. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, you know what? I actually. I'm actually going to go with Ruben Love. I think Ruben Love has been very impressive for the Hurricanes. I think that's another player who's really stood up for them. I mean, he's been all over the place in terms of his try assists. He just finds try assists, um, I, think, I think, within every game he can, possibly. But, um, yeah, he's he'll be a good backup, I think, for, for Stevenson, at least in that 15. And then, yeah, I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, I, I can only select one more player here because I've selected 20 there, 23, 25, 29. Um... Six, yeah, so I've got my 35, so I can only select one more. Oh, jeez. You don't go with I mean, Nana Satiro's been excellent for the Chiefs. Gosh, I feel bad if I don't select him, actually. He's been awesome. He's actually been awesome. Who else? There's Kenny Nahalo, who's been good for the Hurricanes. I mean, Havili, of course, is still up, up for debate. I'm trying to think of anyone else who I forgot in terms of the forwards as well. I mean, there's Locks. I mean, Quentin Strange, maybe, because... Crusaders, obviously, in terms of Robinson, uh, knows him well. Tom Christie as well, another player who's been excellent in terms of a tackling point of view, up there with the best. Well, he has the highest stats in terms of tackles. I mean, um, if I look very quickly, he's won uh, 144, so he's definitely in the conversation. But... Uh, you know what? I... Uh, see, this is so tough. Do I want to... I'm thinking either between... If I'm being honest, guys, for me, it's either between Steven Perifetta, Havili, or um, Atena Nana Saturo. I think it's between those three I'm going to look at. And by the way, I haven't even mentioned him yet, but Josh Morby as well is also in the conversation as well in terms of winners. I think he unfortunately does miss out, but um, but still been brilliant. Even Jacob uh, Ratu Vuki uh, Nankins is another player who's been excellent for the Hollanders as well. Actually, he's actually in the consideration as well, I'd say. He's actually, because he can cover that 15 spot, even like the winners if needed. Ooh, he's been really good this season as well, the more I think about it. Oh, it's tough, guys. It's really tough because you're going to have two fly-outs there with McKenzie and Bowden Barrett. So you don't really need any more. You don't really need more cover because you can have Jordy Barrett play there if needed. You can have, I mean, who else have I selected? Ruben Love can play the 10 if needed. Uh, Perifetza. I, I just think so. it's so harsh if I don't choose Perifetza. But then Nana Satira, I think now I'm, I'm going to disregard... Havili, I just don't think I'm going to go with him. Yeah, I think Jacob Latibuki, Nemkins, I think unfortunately misses out. So yeah, it's now really between Perifeta and Nana Satiro. And the thing is, I've already selected Amoni Nawa, who plays as a 14. Severis can play both. Martelea can play both. Caleb Clark is an 11. So that's a, we have a special t- well, specialist within both positions with Amoni Nawa and Caleb Clark in both ways. Martelea and Severis can play both. We'll cover for two covers in terms of, yes, you know what, I, I'm i going to go with Stephen Perfetta. I'm going to go with Stephen Perfetta. I think he just covers everything in terms of everything there. I think he covers the fly half as well as the, the fullback positions. Um, yeah, that's my side, guys. Oh, my gosh. that's that Guys, this was really tough to do. Um, again, hope you guys, um, hope you guys um, agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, don't tear me uh, don't tear me down. But uh, this was really tough to do, guys. This is on the spot as well, so this is why I could probably come back into this in the next next hour and just have it. I don't know. I'll change my mind. But um, I think from what I've seen so far throughout Super Pacific, I think I'm happy with this selection overall. Um, again, it's tough because you know this is obviously a start of a new cycle for the All Blacks, so it's obviously going to be up for debate. Well, highly up for debate. Um, but like I said, guys, make sure to leave leave your comments, guys. I want to see your comments. Let me know what if you guys agree with my selection, what your kind of prediction would be in terms of the All Blacks um, kind of uh, squad going into that um, English Test series, uh, as well as uh, that uh, again, uh, as well as that game against Fiji. Just to r- remind you guys as well, because it's only a two game series against the English and then one against the Fijians, but um, in uh, San Diego. But uh, yeah, I think that's overall good. Again, guys, make sure obviously to like the video, subscribe to our channel. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.